Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do something very, very different. Uh, I haven't tried this before and uh, you'll get to see me ex do some experimentation. We're going to do an abstract today. Don't do those very often, but every once in a while I get a, uh, an urge to do an abstract. So we're going to try one today. I'm going to show you how I did it and how I figured out what to paint. And uh, it's a little trick maybe that you can use as well. Um, I'm going to zoom in first before I go through the palettes and paints. I want to show you the image that I started with here. Um, it's actually be a nice scene to paint it's in and of itself. Um, it's, uh, it's a place called Peggy's Cove. You heard me talk about that before. You've probably seen me paint it maybe a time or two. Uh, this is what the scene looks like uh, originally. This is the original photo. But I use a tool, uh, something called a uh, zoom finder. Um, and you can use it to like zoom in on a photograph and like pick out a spot. If you want to crop it or change it somehow, you can use a zoom finder to find another photo. Um, I use it to find an abstract. And so I actually, in this case, I took a very small opening in this zoom finder and I zoomed in on a specific spot over here and I actually cropped it to that and uh, printed it out and uh, I'll show you what it is here. So this is the this is what the abstract has given me by <clears throat> using this zoom finder and zooming all the way in using my computer and uh, basically getting this image out of it. Um, and you can see it's it's basically just some uh, metal uh, pipes and, and uh, brackets and things that are on the, the shore there by this um, dock in Peggy's Cove. Doesn't make any difference where it is, doesn't even make any difference what it is. Um, but uh, we're going to use this to use to get our shapes, get some darks and light values. This has a lot of nice um, variation in the uh, values from a very, very light, very light values here, almost white. Uh, to very, very darks. And so it's that pattern of light and dark that you look for to kind of make yourself a pleasing uh, painting overall and to make a pleasing abstract as well. So um, I'm going to zoom out now. I want to get over to my palette and paints and uh, I'll get this uh, palette set up here and uh, I'll tell you what we're doing here in just a second. All right, hold on. There we go. Um, yeah, here we are. All right, so um, this is my uh, painting board. I actually have a new uh, whiteboard here behind my uh, paper, and uh, so we're doing a couple things. We're we're changing the paper we're painting on today. I may not always do this kind of paper. I may go back to my uh, 300 pound, but this is 140 pound cold press. Its size is 12 by 16. That's a different size for me. Uh, it's a uh, Holbein paper, a Strathmore Imperial paper it's called, and it's uh, 140 pound US, 300 grams per meter squared if you're in uh, the, using the Imperial uh, measure system. Um, so uh, it doesn't have quite the tooth that my rough or my uh, cold press 300 pound has, and it's been thinner so it's going to hold uh, the water, a lot less water. Uh, but that's what we're going to paint on today. We're going to try a 12 by 16 format. See if I can zoom in here and get you set up so that we can get everything together here. Um, there we go. Just a little more. have to be my own cameraman here, as you both, most of you know. Um, all right, then let me uh, show you the palette. Um, this is a Sterling Edwards palette uh, that I use, but I've always had My Merry Blue paints in it. Um, I'm going to experiment with some new paints that I haven't tried. My Mary Blue paints are becoming a little harder to get. They're becoming a little more expensive. They actually change the sizes and uh, reduce the amounts a little bit in the uh, tubes. So um, we're trying Holbein paints here today. These are Japanese paints, very beautiful transparent watercolors. And uh, I should say before I leave the Sterling Edwards palette that these are the Sterling Edwards set of brushes. Um, I have a couple other brushes that go with this set, but I have a medium and small uh, bristle brushes that are used. I have a couple of flats, uh, synthetic flats. I have a one inch and a, 
a half inch and I have about three rounds. I have a number 12, number eight, number four, and I have a script liner. So these are the brushes I'll be using. Same brushes, same palette, um, different paints. And I'll show you the paints here now. Uh, let me put these up here. I'll go around the palette and explain these or, or tell you what they are. Again, these are whole buying paints. Hope you can see that. It's a little bit blurry maybe. Uh, but this is a Payne's Gray, Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Deep, a Royal Blue, Permanent Violet, a Green Gray, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Scarlet, Bright Rose, Brilliant Orange, Quinacridone Gold, Permanent Yellow Deep, and Cad Lemon Yellow. All right, so that's the uh, paints and uh, told you about the brushes. Let me get this thing set back up here with the brushes. There we go. Okay, so I got the brushes ready to go. I got my paper ready to go. Um, I also put a little bit of uh, uh, masking fluid on here just to give me some uh, uh, white streaks in there that I can use to uh, help maybe enhance this abstract. Um, so an abstract is really tends to be fairly difficult um, because you typically don't have anything to uh, to look at um, you and so that's why finding this uh, abstract um, finding the abstract in a uh, in another painting or in inside the other inside another uh, um, photograph I should say uh, is is very helpful because it helps <coughs> minimize uh, some of the, the thinking your right brain has to do to create an abstract. I mean, you can always just go and throw paint on paper or on canvas or whatever and uh, call it an abstract, but <coughs> if you want to work on lights and darks and try to have a good pleasing set of uh, darks that are connected to, to lights, that sort of thing, you want to try to uh, have something to, to sort of guide you a little bit, at least. That's my thinking. So I may not talk a lot during this just because it's, uh, it does take more mental uh, work to uh, make it happen, so to speak, uh, when you're doing an abstract. But uh, So I'm trying a lot of different things. I'm trying a new, new palette, new <laughs> uh, same brushes, but uh, new paints. And uh, I don't know how they're going to act or react. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to work on this 140-pound uh, paper either. Uh, but I'm going to start out with some sort of this violet here and see if I can get some of it going. Uh, and uh, I'm doing wet on dry right now and uh, we'll see how that works. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, I'm having a little coughing episode here. All right, so we'll just start with that. And uh, let that set for a minute. Um, we can always use our clear brush, the other bristle brush here. If we want some soft edges, we'll always come in here and get a little water on this brush and just sort of soften the edges. Okay. Um, so let me think about this for a minute, see where I'm going. I want to make sure I keep this white area in the middle open. I don't want it to be uh, covered up. So I'm going to use my smaller brush here. And <coughs> I'm sorry, as my voice is decided to uh, bother me today some reason. Um, let's do this. Um, I'll just sort of fade it off to the end like that. Um, pick up a little bit of this um, <clears throat> Payne's Gray have these just about the same layout that I had them in my uh, previous palette. Uh, uh, 
in terms of where they are on the pallet so I can at least get an idea where things are, are going to be. So what do I want to put with these colors in? That's my sort of my cool colors. <clears throat> Pick up a little bit of this uh, yellow deep. See what happens when I put some of that in. Um, right in here maybe. And uh, Keep track of my whites, make sure I don't lose my white, white paper area. Try to get a very dark color here, see if I can get a, most a black or something here, let's see. So I'm experimenting with paints right now. I don't know how these Holbein paints are going to react. I don't know how they're going to uh, uh, hold, how dark they're going to be how much paint I have to put in to uh, get them dark. Um, so it's a total experimentation right now. Um, a pretty color. Throwing some, um, <clears throat> I guess it's bright rose, in with a little bit of that yellow deep. And I'm just kind of letting it run. I am painting vertically, remember. Um, so, it is going to run, for sure. Okay. Okay. Getting a big run right up here. I'm just letting it go. See what happens. Go back and get see if I can get some more of this dark. <clears throat> see what royal blue does for me here. Maybe royal blue, mixing that with uh, some Payne's gray. Maybe I can get a really good dark with that. Let me see. I need a really good dark right across here somewhere. made a good dark. Payne's gray and uh, 
royal blue. So I'm experimenting with color, experimenting with shapes. I'm looking at what I've got here already. I connect some of these. Mm -hmm. I could probably use a little soft edge in some of this. So let's go in here and see if we can maybe fix this up a little bit. Just using some clear water and uh, pulling it down. So I'm going to go back and pick up a little bit of this color I had here with mixtures in it. So if you've never tried an abstract before, this might be a good uh, chance to uh, give it a try. <clears throat> See how you like it. They're not for everybody, I'm sure of that. Um, but I'm going to come in here with... thing happens here for uh, with this paper because it's um, so smooth it doesn't have nearly the bumps or the tooth it's a common it's a different paper I haven't used this paper before either um, so I'm getting the feel for it um, but it also lets the running happen a lot more. Okay. Try a little bit of Payne's Gray here by itself. See what happens when I go like this. Connect up here. Okay, let's uh, <clears throat> try another brush. Pick up a round brush and uh, see what I've got with these colors here. Maybe I can do a little more with this uh, permanent yellow deep and uh, a little bit of bright rose with that. And let's come in here. Okay, pick up a little bit of this on here and uh, a little bit across like this. This is very uh, linear right now. These are horizontal or vertical brush strokes with a few diagonals in there, a few diagonals in the background. And uh, so I want to try to uh, add some interest to that as well. Um, the other thing that happens with this 140 pound paper is it, it buckles. Um, I never have that problem with my 
300 pound paper. Got some water going on there. Let me pick that up and do something with it there. All right. Uh, 300 pound paper is so solid and, and firm, it just never buckles uh, for me anyway. Uh, close some of this in over here. Like that. Let's see if we can visually connect some of these things here a little bit more. Trying to not leave geometric shapes. I don't want squares, I don't want circles, I don't want rectangles, I don't want triangles, I don't want any recognizable geometric shape. I want abstract shapes like this here. So so if we enforce that, I'll come back and put some other hard edges in some places to uh, reinforce that. Maybe put a few things like this that will make sure you don't have a, you don't see an abs you don't see a geometric shape in there. Uh, all right. I'm letting some of this dry. I may come back and put another light wash over some of that. Um, in this area here, I've still got some darkening I can do. It's really not all that dark. Royal blue is pretty dark, but um, it's not giving me quite the darkness that I'd like to have. I see a uh, rectangular shape shaping up in here so you got to fix that I don't want that to be left as a rectangle as a rectangle I don't even want it to visually look like a rectangle so let's just come across here let's see how about this come across here and just take a uh, diagonal like that and out of that diagonal, we'll put in some thin lines like this. And um, we'll continue those visually down here somewhere. Yeah, I'll skip some areas and then show them up again. All right, so now you have a, a visual connection, even though those lines aren't connected. Um, let's repeat that over here somewhere, like maybe right here. Do another one visually. Connect some of these. Okay. Want to um, maybe put in a a little connector like this. Add some more diagonals. <coughs> okay. Now thing about this is you can make it anything you want. You don't have to follow the you don't have to follow the uh, photograph that you're looking at. You can deviate from it. You can uh, make it however you want. This is your world as Bob Ross used to say. This is 
your world and you make it what you want out of it. How are we doing? We're going less than 20 minutes here, so doing pretty good. Make sure I got abstract shapes here. And I need some more dark in here. This needs to be redone. And we'll just sort of make it look like it's connected maybe through there. Yeah, I'm not crazy about this 140 pound paper um, and this uh, particular brand is even uh, a little bit more uh, smoother than uh, I think if I had 140 pound arches I think it would be uh, uh, not nearly as smooth. All right, we're going to start putting in some curvilinear things here. And uh, do a little bit of um, take a little bit of this and sort of make it fade. Yeah. One nice thing is I can pick that paint right up off of it. Uh, off of the surface. Um, okay. Time for the round brush again. I need some of these round curvilinear things going on here. Let's brown that I use. Pull that out. That was my burnt umber. Um, up here, um, some curves like that. Um, maybe even some curves over here. So now I'm making these look round. Right? They look like pipes now. More like pipes than they did. Taking my uh, <clears throat> flat brush and uh, coming in here, put in a few. My brown go. Burnt umber here. Okay, have a little, couple little triangles there. Have a rectangle starting here. Um, so let's connect this guy diagonally through this space and put a break of some kind in here like that. And uh, let's just take that, take a little water out of the brush, and soften it. Interesting how that runs together when you got it still a little wet. Okay. Um, starting to run out of ideas here. Let's uh, still have a lot of little blocky looking things. When you work with a flat brush, you get a lot of blocky looking things. Um, but we can always fix that by uh, coming in and uh, doing something like this. Um, putting in some some more curvilinear lines so that it's not all just one 
type of shape or one type of line. <clears throat> All right. Um, I still have a good bit of whites in here. There are po pockets of them around. Probably need even some more darks. That's one thing I always fail to do. I've probably told you that before. I rarely get my paintings dark enough in the right spots. So I'm going to come over here and put another very dark line down here like this and another one right beside it. So now you see the dark makes the light pop. You see how that does? It's always a good idea to uh, put some very, very darks next to some very, very lights because typically that's where the eye goes. Now right now I don't have a good focal point because when you look at, you don't have a darkest dark against the lightest light. So I want to try to work on a focal point now. And I'm going to use this darkest dark I've been able to create so far, which is this uh, royal blue and uh, Payne's gray. Probably could put a little red in there, but darken it down even more. Maybe I'll try a little bit of this bright rose and see what that does. Um, it'll give it a little bit of a different color. Um, so let's run this up here even more, make it more that. Um, so where is my focal point? I really don't have one. I probably should be somewhere in this area right here. I'm going to come back and see if I can darken this down a lot more. I got some interest going on there and uh, this area over here I would probably want to just tone it down a little bit I'm gonna put this very light wash on it in right here almost clear water All right, so I've toned this down now. It's not nearly as bright as it was. Very light wash of this dirty stuff I have in my palette here. Almost just almost clear water. The water is pretty dirty right now. Let me go do this something similar here and here. All right, now you're seeing you're seeing a light spot here and a light spot there. This spot here still draws the eye, so let's put some sort of a toner on it, lighten it up. I don't need a lot of paint, but I'm going to just sort of lighten it with another color. Slight wash. And uh, the idea is to make it so the eye doesn't go over here. You want the eye to start looking in here somewhere. It's kind of light on the upper right side too. I got my lower right corner fairly well dark, darkened. I think I'll put another swoop across there like that and just sort of let it fade out. So my um, dark areas, I'm trying to make these darker areas darker by putting another glaze of some sort uh, over them. and. Uh, Okay, there's an area here that needs a little bit more tension up here. This is a big, big area that's uh, kind of just been left alone. So I want to put a couple of things in here to add my curves to it. And like that and uh, 
Okay. All right, I don't want to spend a whole lot more time on this. 30, 30 minutes on an abstract this size is probably plenty. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I do want to tone down just a little bit more of this um, area in here. Kind of force your eye over to this little section. See if that's going to work here. Yeah. Something like that helps somewhat. So you want to leave your whites till the last. Paint them out. Don't paint them out too soon. All right. Got a big run going right down my board here. I didn't even realize that. I'm going to take my script liner now and do a little bit of calligraphy here. I guess it's called calligraphy, where you just sort of use it like a an ink pen or something like that, and put in some some more dark shapes and more uh, dark uh, lines. Make them. Some of them can be dry dry marks or uh, yeah. Got all this going here, something like this. Um, oh, I don't know what this is. It's non-representative abstract. I just want to put in some uh, marks that sort of tie things together uh, as best I can. Um, we'll put another soup like that. Could be some sort of an industrial area or something that's got uh, <laughs> ropes and stuff all hanging over it. Actually, it was. It was this dock over there that had a whole bunch of garbage and junk in it. And uh, so uh, I think come back here and see if I can put just another little splotch of bright. Uh, got to get a bright color here. Um, um, I want you to look over here, so I want this to be brighter than other places, so let me put a little bit of this bright rose over here. Okay, that's and bright. You want to put the a bright color, usually a red of some kind, uh, an area where you want somebody to look. So they might want to look over here. So I'm going to just put in a little bit of it there. Don't have this anywhere else in the painting, uh, but I do have some spots of it and. Uh, a little bit down here, maybe. All right. That's good enough. I've probably spent more time on this than I need to, but, uh, and I do have this white that's going to come off these. Uh, a little afraid to try to take it off right now with my finger because my paint's not dry everywhere. Um, but I'm going to sign this and then I'll take that off and uh, I'll uh, show it to you when I edit the video here. Come on. Okay, so if you want to try a uh, abstract. There's an example. Um, you saw how I got it. You saw what the uh, original photograph looked like. Doesn't look anything like the original photograph or even the one that I zoomed in on, but it does have some of the similar shapes. Um, 
curvy area down here, some diagonals coming this way, some dark shapes up there, a large, large dark vertical shape coming down here. Um, so that's the idea, and, and uh, probably I could make those whites look better if I even darken some of this over here, put another glaze over it to make this stand out even more. Uh, but right now I think I'll stop with that for now. It's been a good 30 minutes or more, and uh, I'll uh, zoom my camera back here and say uh, I hope you like this, watching me experiment with new paints, a new paper, uh, a new style, uh, an abstract that I haven't done for a long time. Uh, this, this style is one that really uh, works on your brain if you ever try to do an abstract. So anyway, uh, that's all I want to show you today. So thanks for tuning in. And uh, until I see you again, it's Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye.